Hi, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 15th of May. I'm expecting upward movement is most likely to continue next week. I have two targets, 3058 or 3238. And this is how I'll approach those targets. As price reaches the first target, and this, if the Elliott wave structure is incomplete and it needs further room to move, then attention turns to the second higher target. Or if price reaches the first target and just keeps on rising, then we use the second target. If price reaches the first target and it halts and the structure is complete, we may then expect a trend change there. I am still expecting that this is a very deep multi-week bounce the first of a possibly several in an ongoing bear market. I am not expecting new all-time highs for the S&P. The next final upward movement for this big bounce may take another one to few weeks. Elliott Wave analysis first, classic analysis last. This Elliott Wave structure complete up here is the simplest structure and it begins at the beginning of this bull market in March 2009, it's a simple five wave structure with three, four, five here. Following five steps forward should be three steps backward and so that's what I'm expecting is going to continue. And I'm labelling this for this wave count cycle wave two. Three step back patterns are most commonly labelled A, B, C and the most common Elliott wave corrective structure is a zigzag which subdivides 5, 3, 5, and the rule for wave B of a zigzag is it may not move beyond the start of A, and so I'm not expecting a new all-time high for the S&P. This channel is still going to be reasonably important. I've given you exact dates and candlesticks on which to draw the channel, copy it over from the weekly to the daily chart, both on a semi-log scale. I am aware, though, that different charting platforms will draw the channel slightly differently. So if you're having trouble drawing the channel, draw the lower line, which is the most important, from this low across these two lows and extend it on out. When this multi-week bounce is complete on the way down, we may find a little bit of support here. It's also possible that price could just slice straight on through, and then we may see a bit of resistance from a throwback. So the line may still be an area of support and resistance in the future. For now, let's focus attention on this bounce, which I'm labelling cycle wave B. When it's over, then I'll use the ratio between A and C to recalculate the target at primary degree, and at that stage it may widen to a small zone or it may change. At the daily chart level, this high here is this point back here. From this high to this low, this subdivides best and looks good as a five wave impulse. I'm labelling this primary wave A, I'm labelling this multi-week bounce, primary wave B. It subdivides most likely as a zigzag, A, B, C. Intermediate wave B may be over. It could be a regular flat correction, A, B, C, and it could be complete with a little overthrow for the lower edge of the channel. That's pretty normal looking for the C wave of a regular flat, and it fits quite nicely within this little channel. We could, though, also move the degree of labelling within this down one degree, this could just be wave A of a longer lasting flat or wave W of a double flat or double combination. Depending on whether or not we see strength and upward movement is going to tell us which of those two scenarios is most likely. For now I'm going to label intermediate B as complete but we would have confidence in that view if we see a close above this line of resistance on a daily basis, on a day which has support from volume. And in other words, an upward breakout with support from volume. That would give us real confidence that intermediate B is over, and then we can have more confidence in these targets. While price remains within the consolidation zone, the other view that intermediate B could continue sideways will have to be understood to be also valid. Draw an Elliott channel around primary wave B now, from the start of A to the end of B with a copy on A. I know it doesn't contain this, but this lower edge is the most important at this stage. While intermediate wave C may be continuing higher, any smaller corrections or pullbacks along the way up may find support at the lower edge of that channel. 
At the hourly chart level, I have two wave counts for you. This first wave count follows labeling from the daily chart, and it looks at intermediate B, a complete regular flat correction, labeled A, B, C, subdividing 3, 3, 5. Minor wave B reached and passed the minimum required 90% the length of minor wave A. It's a 0.94 length of minor A. Minor C overshoots the lower edge of the channel. That's a fairly common look for a C wave and it exhibits no Fibonacci ratio to minor wave A. It's a bit too long to say it's a quality in length with A. If intermediate B is over here and intermediate C is beginning, then intermediate C needs to subdivide as a five wave structure. That may be either an impulse or an ending diagonal, with an impulse much more likely because they are much more common structures. I will label it as an impulse and expect to see an impulse, unless and until overlapping suggests a diagonal should be considered. Within intermediate C, minor wave 1 may be an incomplete impulse, with minute 1 and 2 complete, and now a third wave in the early stages. We may see some increase in upward momentum when markets open next week if my labelling of this piece of movement is correct as a series of three overlapping first and second waves. When minor wave 1 may be complete, then a pullback for minor wave 2 may not move beyond the start of minor wave 1 below the short term invalidation point. If we move the degree of labelling within the whole of intermediate B or down one degree, it's possible to see that only minor wave A of a longer lasting flat or minor wave W of a longer lasting double flat or combination may be underway. This could be a zigzag complete down here, 5, 3, 5, because it's possible to see this downward movement as either a 5 wave impulse or a 3 wave zigzag, and this second chart views it as a 5 wave impulse. If it's a 5, then minor waves W or A would subdivide as a zigzag. If it's a 3, then minor W or A would subdivide as a regular flat correction. This second wave count expects intermediate B is going to continue sideways with big swings from resistance to support and back again, still within reasonably within the consolidation zone with overshoots still allowed for to continue for another couple of weeks or so, that is possible. If we see an upward breakout above resistance on an upward day with support from volume, I will then discard the second wave count. At the daily chart level, if we move the degree of labelling of the entirety of that bull market all up one degree, then instead of just wave one at cycle degree within super cycle five, the whole of super cycle five could be over, which means that Grand Super Cycle 1 could have been over at this high in February 2020. What that means is a once in multi-generation trend change could have occurred and an absolutely huge bear market could be in its very early stages. I'm going to label this Grand Super Cycle 2 and expect in the first instance for it to most likely subdivide as a zigzag, although it could be any Elliott Wave structure except a triangle. A zigzag sees wave A subdivide as a five wave structure. One, two incomplete, and then three, four, five would be expected. Two may not move beyond the start of one. The structure of two is the same as the first daily chart. It's just here the degree of labeling is one degree higher. The targets are the same. The channel is the same, and we have the same problem with the B wave. It could be over here, I think most likely, but it could also continue sideways for another couple of weeks or so. We need to see a break above resistance on an upward day with support from volume before we can have confidence that the B wave is over. For now, let's expect it may be over, but approach this with the understanding it could continue sideways. If it is over, let's look for support at the lower edge of this channel along the way up. At the hourly chart level, the labelling of this is the same as the essentially the same as the first chart. I'm going to look at intermediate A as a five wave structure here though. Primary B could be a zigzag, five, three, five. Primary C could be beginning, and I'm labelling this the same. The degree of labelling is different, it's one degree higher. At the weekly chart level this week, an outside week closes red with a long lower wick. This wick is bullish. 
On balance volume remains constrained. RSI is very much in neutral territory. There's plenty of room for price to rise or fall. ADX is declining us, telling us the previous downward trend may have ended. MACD still bearish, no crossover yet. ATR declining as price moves sideways, that's quite normal. The long lower wick this week suggests more upward movement next week. At the daily chart level, price is still in this consolidation zone and these trend lines are essentially the same as my little trend lines on that B wave on the Elliott wave charts. We need to see a break above resistance or below support. An upward breakout requires support from volume for confidence. A downward breakout not so much. Price can fall of its own weight. We've got a couple of bullish long lower wicks. They're not very bullish though and price is returning back to within the consolidation zone. We would expect at least a swing now to resistance and then when price gets up there let's look to see if we're going to get a breakout. Volume slightly declines on Friday for another upward day, slight concern there. ADX is declining, the DX lines are whipsawing, there's no clear trend at this time frame. On balance volume is at resistance, let's watch this one really closely on Monday. If on balance volume breaks above resistance this is, this is technically significant because this trend line is long held and tested multiple times. If that happens then I would strongly support the view that the correction is over and the upward bounce is continuing. RSI is in neutral territory, plenty of room at the daily chart level also for price to rise or fall. At the daily chart level MACD gives a bearish crossover but it has been whipsawing lately so I won't put weight on that. And Stochastics is in neutral territory. What about the AD line and inverted fix? The AD line is a measure of market breadth last week gave us a bullish signal that's been followed by an outside week which has closed red so I expect that was not predictive. This week price has moved within the week lower, the AD line has declined, there is no new short term divergence here. At the daily chart level for Friday, well for Thursday we got a bullish signal from the AD line followed by upward movement on Friday so that was predictive. Friday saw price move higher, the AD lines moved higher, neither have made new short term highs. There is no new divergence, upward movement for Friday does have support from rising market breadth. Inverted VIX is a measure of market volatility. This week, well last week we got a bullish signal from inverted VIX which has not been followed by upward movement this week and so it's considered to have failed. This week prices moved lower within the week, inverted VIX has declined, there is no new short term divergence. At the daily chart level prices moved higher for Friday as has inverted VIX, upward movement from price comes with a normal corresponding decline in VIX, there is no new short term divergence. That's all from me this week with your S&P analysis, I hope all our members are having an awesome weekend.